Hey everyone, it's Gingerbread, member of Spicy Crack and Rolls, host of News Splash, and audio guy for Ink TV. And I managed to record a few rounds of Splatoon 2 gameplay at E3. I wish I had taken more from some of my earlier matches because I wasn't expecting this to come out as decent as it did, but uh, anyway. Wanted to highlight this particular set, from my perspective of course, because we went in a group of 8 people wanting to play together and we essentially set up one of the first private battle lobbies of Splatoon 2. And we let Jordan Kent, one of the commentators for the event, know, and some of the Squid Research staff also came to watch because they mentioned earlier in a few of our other games that we were some of the best groups they had seen. So that was pretty cool they all came to hang out and watch us. Now granted we only had access to Turf War, but we were still able to get a more accurate feel of competitive play, and it was still nice to also get a hands-on feel of the new maps, and personally I don't have a favorite yet, but the fact I don't dislike any of them is what I consider a pretty good sign on the quality. So for the first match, I was testing out some basic Octobrush things for Silver the Brush Extraordinaire, but it also gave me an opportunity to use the Auto Bomb, as you'll see and you'll notice when you throw it, a ring shoots outward that is meant to detect any nearby squids, and if nothing is found in that, it just explodes like a normal bomb, which I think is a neat little bit of versatility. I should also mention my build was Run Speed on the Hat, because I was trying to find it real quick just since I wanted to know the name of that piece of gear, as there was an actual prize you could win during E3, and it's called the King Flip Hat, and it's the same hat the default Inkling Girls Platoon 2 wears as seen on the cover and other advertisements. Um, I was also rocking two mains of Quick Respawn to see how quickly you come back after getting splatted playing passively, so not really an optimal performance setup by any means. But thanks to the willing participation of Penguin, uh, providing some nice blaster pachinks, I was able to get some good QR science done. So you'll see that coming up shortly a little later in the video. But uh, what I can say about the weapon itself, um, the Octobrush was a weapon I picked up towards the end of Splatoon 1, and playing it here, it feels very similar. Granted, the roll will be a bit different without the Kraken and Beacons, but uh, this one played similarly to the Octobrush Nouveau variation, having a bomb and then a projectile special. And the inkjet, I'm not the greatest with it yet, but uh, I feel it complements the brush decently well because it mixes up your playstyle. So going from a swinging brush on the ground to an aerial missile launcher, it's a nice change up to the approach of whatever engagement you're in. And even though we don't have damage to work with anymore, I didn't feel I was having trouble getting any of my splats in this little session. So getting back to the topic of quick respawn real quick, um, you just saw me get the splat on their uh, stingray. I counted the frames from the point the name of the weapon comes up when it disappears, and after I splatted the stingray, the name splat roller comes up for around 130 frames. Then with me getting blasted, the name blaster came up for 80 frames, and getting blasted again immediately after, it was another 80 frames. So two mains of QR saves about 50 frames, and since gear effectiveness gives diminishing returns, I would guess maybe one main of QR saves 30 frames, and the second would add another 20 for the 50 total frames. So it's... Quick Respawn is... still has its use. Um, it won't be nearly as powerful as it was in the old meta, but I think some people will still be able to find a use for it. Granted, the new mechanic does indeed, I feel, get rid of the kind of sketchy trades and the complete benefits that came with it, so it is fixed a little bit, but I don't think it's completely ruled out yet. But then again, these are very early observations, and I can't, as of now, I don't know where it will truly fit in the overall scheme of things. And you'll notice I was actually able to top score in this particular game, and that's even with me messing around doing basically nothing for about the first 30 seconds of the match. So, uh, not gonna chalk that up to QR still being a powerful tool, but, uh, just saying. But nah, as of now, and possibly even the first few weeks of the game being released, the effectiveness of anything will be in question as results will vary and we all learn how to properly handle these new situations and weapons and maps and the like. So for this next match, I'm actually going to be switching over to the blaster, as that's my main specialty type of weapon, and just the blaster kit itself is by far my favorite weapon. Um, I feel the toxic mist gives you so much more of a benefit than what the disruptor gave the old blaster. Uh, with disruptors, you really had to 
it was, it was all or nothing. You either hit your opponent and they're disrupted, or if you didn't hit them, you you didn't gain anything and you actually lost ink. But Toxic Mist, um, whether or not you hit or miss them, you actually still gain something. If you hit them, then of course they're kind of, they're, they're poisoned, they're struggling to move, they're losing ink, and you can hit them easier. But if you also don't hit them, you take up that little bit of area deployed by the Toxic Mist, and that's really a place your opponent doesn't want to go. So what you can do is you can kind of read how they're not going to go there and aim your shots anywhere else or any of, at any of their other options ahead of time to try and hit them there. And then the Splashdown is also kind of a panic button, because if you do happen to miss your shot, then you can just activate Splashdown, try and hit them from there. They kind of backed off. That gives you more space to try and shoot them again. Overall, the Blaster Kit just has some nice options for trapping and spacing, depending on your situation. Um, I was also using some Sub Saver, some Ink Recovery, and Swim Speed, so a bit of uh, ink efficiency on my end to try and not run out of ink for most things. Um, I'll say now this game wasn't the most exciting on my end because I was very sloppy at times. I couldn't really finish off anyone, but uh, I did apply some Blaster Pressure as well. At the beginning, you see Power and I going up to the right. Um, I was trying to get up high and then just get a bird's eye view of the map because I was still learning it. This is only maybe my third or fourth. Third or fourth. I haven't played on it too much. I'm still learning it. But um, I was very patient overall. I wasn't trying to like just bum rush anyone. I wasn't being very adventurous. Just kind of safe and see what I see. Try to make an opportunity if I see one arise. Uh, Jordan and I were actually joking about, uh, I was just kind of like guitar shopping here, which I'm like, there's, there's a decent amount of detail in the environment, which is, which is nice. I mean, there always has been, but it's just extra, you know, extra bit. And here, being attacked by like three different things, the Stingray, the Slosher, and being shot at the same time, also while missed and living, I was, I was kind of impressed with myself for not dying and being dead. Um, you'll see Hitzel and I jousting a lot with uh, Toxic Mists, like here, um, I was just trying to make up for the area he was taking with a bit of my own. And here the ink storm came into play, but I didn't feel too pressured by that. I didn't really want to be there, but it wasn't like a, a just main factor that I really wanted to prioritize. But of course with my life, uh, what better way to use it when you get away with it than just by throwing it away. Two days. So now I'll finally start doing a little bit better. Um, really hard to do worse at that point. Uh, you'll see Hitzel and I again up meeting up at the top this time. I was kind of surprised that your opponents can actually get up there, so it's neat seeing uh, all the different ways that Starfish main stage will have, not just for you, but your opponents as well, that you'll have to look out for. This was coming, and I was just like, eh, I think I can drop down through that, so I wasn't really too pressured by anything. Um, a lot of the specials, they need extra help. They won't really get a splat just by itself. Okay, that was... I needed the lead shot a bit more than I probably could have got something. Um, there I do a little bit better job. Here, I thought I could have a better angle at it. I probably was, but I just panicked a little bit because we were two down I didn't want to be caught up too far. As I go far anyway, but I stay put. I'm not really making my presence that known. When I see Latias, I'm trying to poke at her a bit and I almost get her, but then um, I get bomb baited. So uh, good job on you, Latias. I wanted to avoid that with uh, Splashdown. I think getting high up in the air could have avoided that bomb, but of course I didn't do that. Um, and then with the last seconds of the match dropping down, I was just like, I won't be able to get back and play, so I might as well just try and turf up the base and spruce that up a little bit. And granted, it looks terrible. Still, um, really thought they had us, but somehow we pull out the win because we go 40.1 to their 39.6, so you get a .5 lead. And it was actually uh, nine whole grains behind the scenes uh, carrying the team, so good job on him. Uh, overall, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, look at a few matches. Um, I think you'll all really enjoy the game once you get your hands on it for yourself. There's been a lot of improvements, lots of changes, um, and so yeah, that'll be exciting. And I want to give another big thanks to Nintendo for just inviting us to E3. It was a great trip, and just providing us with the opportunity. It was uh, 
definitely something I'll, I'll remember forever. So big thanks to them, and thanks to you for watching, and we'll catch you later.